I'm excited today because I get to come out of my comfort zone and also come into the banking hall so you can get to see the reception that you receive, you get to understand the space that you walk in. I'm giving you a virtual tour of what you will witness if you came yourself. Hi, how are you? I'm blessed. So I'm looking for Elsie. Oh, there she is. Hi. Elsie, I am so glad that you, we can't <laughs> hug. Oh my goodness. <laughs> New normal, no hugging, just elbow bumping. <laughs> See you just now. Hi there and welcome once again to Yoho Series 2021 with me, Michelle Atto. Now I was reading this pamphlet, which is what you find within the reception area of First National Bank's every single reception area and it's quite user and reader friendly and one of the things that we were going to touch on today is part of the products that they have within this pamphlet so if you ever come across this pamphlet or this booklet please look out for all the information within each section that can give you further information but the purpose of this series is to demystify to take away all the fears and also to have a conversation to make this more reachable and also friendly for you so that you can understand all of the big lingos that are used in the financial institution and you can probably reach into them so they can reach out to you because they do say first national bank how can we help you <laughs> <laughs> i think that this is something that has been ingrained in every even i go around saying how, how can, can i help, help you, you? <laughs> but today we're touching on a particular subject the subject of land purchase and now one of the products under the home loan portfolio is a land loan purchase is that correct yeah, sure. so i have with me today elsie nana achampo now she's going to touch on that particular subject because there's so many different types of lands and there's so many different approaches to use when you're going about wanting to acquire your land so elsie let's touch on the subject what types of lands are there under this portfolio that you have Okay, so um, here at First National Bank, uh, we finance service plots. Okay. And when I say service plots, I'm talking about a mapped road, uh, land that has the mapped road network. Okay. Land that has electricity. Okay. Land that has water. And so that's what we call the service, um, service plot or service, service parcels okay. of land. Okay. And we also ensure that either the land has a land title certificate or it has is fully registered. It has okay. a fully registered indentures. Okay. So those are the two two main things to okay. look after. So for. just to recap, we have uh, the service plots or service lands or parcels of land, and then we have registered lands. Now let's break it down. Registered lands and and service lands are two separate things altogether. Um, yeah, they're two separate things altogether. When you talk of registered lands, of course, you're talking about documentation. Okay. But if you talk of service plots, it means you're talking about amenities that okay. comes with the land, okay. basically. So, um, but for our land purchase mortgage, you need to ensure that there are two. The land is either registered or it's also a service plot, or end is a service plot. I, I'd like us to break it down so that in case, for instance, my viewer that is potentially a service plot buyer who wants to go into a gated community, who wants to have the safety and the assurance of having a one-stop shop, not having to go through the hassle of finding a connection for electricity, water connection, and all the other things that come with wanting to be in a safe environment. Let's talk on, let's, let's touch on service plots specifically Specifically, if somebody wanted a service plot within the Gaza community, um, what kind of background check do they themselves have to do in order to even start the process? Well, first of all, um, it's important to note that the land must solely or the purchase must solely be for residential use okay. or for residential purposes. Okay. So that's the first thing you must take note okay. uh, of. And then also you must ensure that whoever is selling the land is the rightful owner. Ah, and that's, that's evidence. And that's evidence <laughs> by the land title certificate. Okay. Um, the vendor might give, I'm sure they'll give you a copy. Yes. And also make sure that it's all is fully registered. So okay. it has to be, it can be one of So that's a very touchy point. And it's, it's a very sensitive, you know, uh, subject is. as well. Sorry? It is. It is. Very because sensitive. because in, when, in as much as, you know, okay, so you go through the list, the checklist, you know, it has to be a registered land, the true, the true 
seller Valid of the land owner. has to be has to be legitimate, you know, owner of the land. How do you actually legitimize the documentation? Because nowadays there's so much extortion going on, you know, within the area of land purchase. You don't know who's actually selling you um, legitimate land if there's no litigation on the land, if there's not a double sale on the land. What's the first one thing that you must look out for as a buyer before you even bring your request to First National Bank? So first of all, you must ensure that whoever you're dealing with is the same person who um, whose name is on the documentation. What documentation is that? Either a land title certificate okay. or an indenture, okay. fully registered indenture. So, so number one is to look out for a land certificate with the person's name on it. What if the person, the person, the, the land was bequeathed to the person, for instance, um, and well, it's the same family name? That with experience, you realize there are so many um, scenarios yes. when it comes to land ownership. There are instances where, for instance, I buy a land and within a short time I decide to sell it. Yes. I mean, the obvious position at that time would be that I, I wouldn't have registered fully in my name. Yes. But that means that whoever I bought it from can help me do the transfer directly to the new buyer. Okay. So we can also have that conversation. So it's not a straight jacket thing. Okay. But you always must make sure that whoever is selling owns the land. <sighs> the subject of land purchase and and ownership and you know uh, all of that is just it's just a very sticky area and so what assurance do you give the buyer once they've brought you all the documentation so for instance the land title and the certificates and everything else what assurance do you give them before you even move on to the next step well i even would wish that most people will purchase land through mortgages okay um, this also helps deal with deal with some of the the post purchase events. So, are you suggesting that you have a list of service plots and registered lands that you recommend to the buyer? So, therefore, it's the best avenue to use rather than them bringing what they already want and then want to mortgage it. Well, we are open to both. Okay. Uh, we have a pool of developers. At the same time, we're also open to private individuals who are selling their land. Yes. The most important thing is we will definitely conduct due diligence yes. on whichever property you're buying. Okay. So there's no need to fear as to whether you're buying from a developer we know or a new private vendor. The most important thing is the person, the rightful owner. So that's the question you must always ask yourself. And the bank is here to help you and that's why we're here. So we always, in fact, <laughs> left to me, most people will purchase land through mortgages because then it gives you that comfort. Absolutely. Because the bank is going to do due diligence to ensure that whoever is selling the land is the rightful owner. If there's any conflict, if there's any encumbrance, at least you get the assurance that, okay, at least, I mean, All the, the checks green have been light. Done. Exactly. For you to so let me ask in terms of pricing because, um, I mean, I'm sh and I'm sure this is... Uh, may sound very banal but then i'd like to know is there an extra charge for instance if aha All right. ah. <laughs> <laughs> the posture change so shoot that means that there is a there is no. there is a caveat there's a caveat to that so i let's look at scenarios right. um i've noticed the land that i'm interested in let's say for instance chado um, and the land that I'm interested in, I've done my due diligence. I've, you know, the land is, is rightfully owned by a particular person. Their name is on the title. Everything is, you know, um, legitimate. Um, and I bring the land to you as my, you know, my bank, and I'm asking you for to to assist me purchase the land. If you find anything wrong with the land, clearly, you know, you would discredit it. And if you gave me options to choose from your pool of land um, vendors, does that mean that I may have to pay a little extra for what you provide to me as opposed to what I bring? Oh, not at all. Okay. Um, there's, there's nothing extra about it. Okay. We've always been known to go for go the extra mile to assist customers find the properties they're looking for. Okay. In instances where you don't even qualify for the loan, we always have a discussion as to whether you want to have a joint application okay. or you want to go for a lower property or you'd want to wait for a while to, or you raise more of the down payment okay. so we've always had conversations around this so it's it's more of an added service okay so that's no way we're going to charge you for any extra 
recommendations. We don't. So the added service comes with no added charges. No, we don't. Let's talk about credit, credit worthiness, and also cre you know credit checks that you do on your customers and also on the land vendor. Do you also offer that as part of your due diligence that you that you do before the land is sold? Yes, we do that. Okay. So we have due diligence on the customer on the pro property and then on the uh, vendor. So let's look at the process, the steps to take in acquiring one's, one's land. What are some of the steps? Well, the first and ultimate step is to identify the land. Okay. So once you do that, we expect that you should have had um, an agreement with whoever is selling. Okay. And that's also evidenced by the offer letter that will be given to you. Okay. So once you have the offer letter, you can apply for the land purchase mortgage. Okay. You submit all the requisite documents that's listed on our website okay. if, if you've been there. There's something special about mortgages. And I always say this mortgage is peculiar. Okay. And so um, it's tailored to suit your needs. Yes. So if Michelle walks in, based on the circumstances surrounding your purchase, yes. it will be treated differently. Um, if Elsie walks in, based on the circumstances surrounding the purchase, that also be treated differently. Okay. So sometimes I know there'll be that whole back and forth thing, but it's only because we try to make sure that we're, we're telling our product to suit the specific circumstances Absolutely. we have at that point in time. Because there are some lands that, for instance, requires okay. consent. Okay. When that happens, you realize we would request for extra documents. Okay. Let's say consent from the vendor. Okay. So that, that situation might change from somebody's buying a land doesn't require that consent. Mm -hmm. So it's very peculiar. And once the customer is patient, we can travel through the journey successfully. So if you have any questions, you have any inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact anyone at First National Bank. And I'm sure Elsie Nana Champon will be at your service whenever you walk through the doors. First National Bank, how, how can, can we, we help, help you? you? <laughs>